Thanks very much for that very warm introduction. Uh, yesterday I had a graveyard slot around 4 o'clock and I was worried that there wouldn't be anyone there. Now tell me there would be too many here. So uh, just bear with me anyway. As you can see, uh, this is a, a paper which was done in collaboration with myself, Dr. Alan Hoare and Professor Roger West. And I will get into more meaning of what the actual title of the paper is as we go forward in the presentation. So essentially the paper was broken down into three different literature aspects. One of them was building information modeling. Now I'm not going to get into what BIM is. If you're at this conference, I think we all know what BIM is. BIM to me is a different way of doing management. It's essentially the use of a virtual model with intelligent information that enhance life cycle costs. What interests me within the building information modeling is the process, the people involved. As Laura said the other day, it's 90% people, 10% technology, and I firmly believe that. And as this paradigm shift happens, one of the most interesting aspects is that the facilities manager is probably the person who has seen this and is most you know, enthusiastic about this, because essentially he's getting a building with all his assets in it, all model, and he can recognize it. The FM sector is one of the most growing sectors within the industry. And on top of that, BIM holds the, the opportunity to have unparalleled successes. You could have an asset management. Your BIM model can contain all your assets with all your information in it. This can be used for preventive maintenance by understanding straight off if the equipment should be repaired or replaced. It can be used by disaster management. You'll be able to see people coming in and out and analyze the disasters as well as uh, energy analysis. You can see what was the energy analysis originally was compared to what it is now. But something which my PhD is strongly focused on is the role the facilities manager plays within the BIM process. The facilities manager is in a unique process to see the whole life cycle. He's responsible for 80% compared to the 20% that the construction and the architects are involved in. He has a massive chance here to impact the life cycle. But amazingly enough, his role within the FM, within the process, within the BIM process, where does he come on, what does he add, is he a hindrance? And essentially, how do we measure the benefit he is? So this is where my research has brought me. And I was lucky enough to get to practice this and kind of investigate this on the CETA BIM pilot project to a point. And essentially this was a pilot project brought to the attention to us by uh, Bernard Fortman. And the original framework of it was a development map to produce a number of t interesting areas in which the topographical areas were complicated, resulting in being too difficult to sign in a 2D campus. This resulted in an enhanced project brief being suggested to the client for the creation of a fair trim model for the whole area, which could be further used to analyze and forget, investigate best design options. This model further presented an interesting building in the form of Rowland Stem Community Centre. The community centre was needed some reform of refurbishment and offered this chance for the CETA pilot team to create a sustainable and functional building. This resulted in uh, the collaboration between a number of top professionals within the Irish construction industry, all spearheaded by Chair Paul Sexton. Paul uh, based a number of decisions and kind of uh, overreaching aims around Japanese philosophies. And one of them I quite like was that uh, vision uh, without action is a daydream, but uh, action without vision is a nightmare. And this was used then to base the rest of Paul's and one of the most interesting ones was the use of lean construction technologies and also on top of that was to bring FM to the very forefront of the design. This allowed an opportunity within the pilots for the FM and amazingly the FM Paris and Bobby is here in front of me so I'll try and do you some justice Bobby. But, uh, Amazingly, the FM was brought to the beginning of the structure. It allowed him a chance to come on, say what documentation needed, what could it help enhance the life cycle, and what he needed from the building. Now, it must be known that the FM, as with Bobby here, he's mainly handover and documentation. So it was up to everyone within the pilot to concentrate within their profession where exactly they can get the most life cycle costs and benefit from. So just moving on here. My responsibility within this was to set up a number of KPIs. The purpose of setting up these KPIs was to measure the benefit of what the pilot team was getting. And specifically, what I wanted to measure was the FM's benefit, so I could use the information then to move on and use these to set up my own kind of FM KPIs. There was a number of things I had to go over before I did this, like, does the KPI motivate? Is the KPI measurable? Is the measurement of KPI affordable? and also is it meaningful. So I did, went through a number of literature on BIM KPIs 
spend a good bit of time, and these were the ones I came up with. I came up with 11 different ones. So I'll run through them quickly enough. The first one was uh, pilot team skills and knowledge. This aimed to measure the pilot team re reaction, acceptance, and the cultural attitudes and skill acknowledge levels. Trust, this aimed to measure the high levels of trust and respect within the pilot team. The next three looked at 4D and 5D technologies in the form of time, safety and budget. The first was time as this should measure the benefit of using 4D scheduling and planning approach and aim to measure the team's time and expenses. The safety aimed to measure the health and safety environmental considerations. And the budget aimed to measure the savings regards to how the adoption of core technologies can result in savings for the project. The next four after that focused very strongly on FM collaboration and FM involvement. And uh, these were as follows. Environmental, the measurement of energy usage pre and post occupancy. Financial management, which is the occupational uh, expenditure. Functionality and effectiveness, what was achieved in the end of the whole process and fit for purpose. And FM and construction team engagement, so to measure the value and barriers associated with the involvement of the FM. The final two were client satisfaction, which was to measure the client's awareness to become more sophisticated. And finally, waste, to measure the, the part of the technology to play in the reduction of waste. So I think, as you can see, the 11 KPIs if they're measured properly, should give us a very good indication of exactly what each pilot member was getting from the team. So I'll just give a very brief overview of the actual project to let you know what was going on. The project is finished now. I measured the first five months. I'm in the current process of measuring the next set of KPIs. But just to run through the actual project itself and give you an overview, a further meeting took place with the client and a brief was created. The brief involved two phases of the project, with phase one ultimately aimed to reevaluate the current structure and produce a solution for a more functional building. This has been based around the client's needs, which includes better thermal comfort, enhanced artificial lighting, improved acoustics, upgraded crash, as well as the addition of a shop unit. Survey data was provided for the project through Coastway, through combined, three combined methods that consisted of setting up a GPS of the area, then secondly, uh, as there was no drawings of the area or detailed surveys, an unmanned, an unmanned aerial vehicle was flown over the area, capturing digital information. This UAV was pre-programmed using Google Earth and GPS, was flown over the area to create a digital model of the area over a four-hour period. Thirdly, this data was combined with the laser scanners building using a cloud-based solution provided by Team Platform, which, in, which produced a full-color point cloud that could be given to each team member. Also, before the commencement of the scheme design, there was a number of different standards for the SCADE, so it was decided to use the AEC UK BIM standards. The 3D terrain model received from the survey data was then imported into ARCHICAD, which was further taken through Google SketchUp. Cloud data was also received. To combine point cloud data and art uh, rectify the imagery, a building model was created. Further then through the use of Skype and Dropbox, once other methods, the building began to be designed while interacting online. Layers were created in Photoshop. And once an outline design was created, it could be modeled and checked in the Ecotech and Wind model. And it was found that the actual new building itself was doing exactly what the old building didn't do, was deflecting the wind. The FN pilot team was brought on around this stage and began to become involved and informed that Kobe would be used as a data exchange for deliverables for FM data. This, uh, the first opportunity to see information coming from the model was through an IFC file created by Pilot Architect. This was exported into a software tool that would be developed and a documentation intact. Synchro was further used for site logistics and helped map the project schedule. Uh, this here is the M&E design of the building, and essentially it was the pilot team along with the M&E designer that we sat around a table and discussed the vision with regards to the plant. The space was divided into four different areas, retail, office, general use areas, meeting rooms, general purpose hall and crash. First task was to reduce the energy costs, and so therefore it was important to go around each of the elements and set the possible U values. It was agreed to reuse the original floor ducts and put a package unit at ground floor to inform maintenance and purpose for ease of access. This was improved the ventilation through the space by providing heating and cooling so it could modulate to occupancy, occupancy levels. The areas of FM and whole lifestyle costs were strongly taken on board the, in regards to the plant room, which was assigned with a few of ease of access to ensure all future maintenance could easily take place. A BMS was also considered, but project this size, it, was, it didn't make sense. Uh, finally, the model was incorporated with all M&E, as you can see there, and on top of that it was given to a QS who did both 2D and 3D designs on it. Uh, there's a lot more pictures of this, and I'll show you where to go to access a lot more information about it at the end of it. 
So this brings me on to the actual measurement of the KPIs and the results that I garnered from them. The fourth KPI skills, it was found that 70% of the team reported some to a significant change across the board when it came to knowledge. However, the FM team were the only pilot team members who have no, had no change in communication, collaboration or software skills. Now this is only today after four or five months. I've no doubt that's changed within the last while. The KPI two, which was trust, there was a high change of trust across the board with 8% of the pilot team members reporting some significant change. The F and team reported no change of trust regard to other disciplines or effective communication within the team. KPI 3, which is the dealing with your uh, 4D and 5D. It was noted that the, uh, must be noted the contractor was actually changed during the pilot and the new contractor did not have really have the opportunity to use the 4D constructability review. So, uh, however, there were divided opinions regarding the reduction of pilot program by using 4D technologies, with the FM and QS team reporting no change. Uh, the fuse were split in regards to 4D technology, providing an advantage in regards to health and safety, with the FM reporting no change and architect reporting a significant change. While KPI 5, was 83% of the team believe that 5D technologies have been an advantage in predicting budgets. So, moving on to the next uh, four KPIs, it looked specifically at the FM interaction and FM involvement. And what was found was that 75% of the pilot team claimed, sorry, I moved on. What is found is 75% of the pilot team claimed there was some significant change from having F, F, early FM input in regard to measurement of energy usage pre and post occupancy. There has been very little done in this regard to date, as noted by the FM team, and has predominantly been carried out by the M&E consultant. The next, uh, the next one looked at finance, which was 75% of the pilot team believed that the FM can help improve operational expenditure. The architect know that the earliest systems are specified and integrated in design, the better chance they have the impact of financial management. The FM team have noted that early indications suggest that it will cost more design stage for FM involvement. Uh, KPI 87.5% of the pilot team noted fans across the board in regards to FM involvement and increasing functionality and effectiveness. The pilot contractors say that there has been no change from the FM involvement, early FM involvement. The QS noted that early FM involvement will inform the design team of the facilities manager needs post-contract and can therefore design accordingly from the outset instead of changing during tenure stage or post-contract stage. The architect acknowledged that advanced knowledge in FM system choice means advanced ways to stimulate and optimise the systems to be installed. The final KPI in the FM section noted that the whole pilot team believed the FM can bring some significant value change to the team. The FM team believed that the facility manager can bring out a value change to the design team, but as yet there has been no, there has been little involvement to date. The final two KPIs just looked at client satisfaction and waste, and what was found was that. Uh, sorry, just bear with me for a second, please. It was actually found that 50% of respondents claimed there has been a significant change in client awareness, while 81% reported some significant change in client budgeting. With waste, all of the pilot team claimed that there was significant changes made to CO2. So suppose where does this leave us all and the overall findings? Well, the CETAS pilot aim was ultimately to shift focus from design and construction to FM and operation whole life cycle. The pilot, pro uh, the pilot project is now five months in, and what can be reported so far is the facility manager can, without a doubt, help ensure the most relevant data is embedded into the model that will be the most benefit when it comes to operations of the building. However, there are signs within the pilot that the FM is sure of benefit they can provide, and if not, like other professions, the fancy communication, trust, or software skills. The most benefit that has been achieved in the FM field within the pilot result from m and &E team who have designed the building to be more sustainable and energy efficient. There is also concern that it will cost more at design to involve FM involvement. So where does this bring me now at the moment? I'm in the process of measuring the KPIs now for the rest of uh, the duration. This could completely fly in the results of what the initial four or five months said, but that's the whole purpose of this PhD in developing these KPIs, is that I'm coming across the barriers, I'm seeing the problems, I'm seeing where the FM is finding it hardest to interact, and where they're finding the biggest barriers at this present time. This is hopefully all going to lead to maybe the advocation of a more le uh, robust, lean FM, where you might be able to map or pinpoint exactly where the FM can become involved, exactly where they can have the most benefit, and exactly put the correct tools which isn't in place to measure what the contribution is. So uh, I thank you very much for your attention and there's the link to see more in the pilot project.
I've already fi finished uh, well on time there. Um, so we've time to take a couple of questions uh, for Barry. Do we have a roving mic out there? Okay, uh, any questions? We'll take two questions. And apologies for uh, Barry is actually uh, lecturing in DIT, not GMIT. Good morning, and thank you for a, a very good presentation. Um, just one question. Um, you mentioned in the model that the incorporation of the BMS was excluded um, in the model, and just wanted to understand uh, a little bit about you know, that, that decision process and, and some of the complexities of, of perhaps incorporating it. Yeah, uh, we did a, an analysis, a financial analysis of including the BMS, and initially it just came down to finance. The, the, the structure itself, the pilot project, it, it's what I didn't really explain. It, it's basically just a community centre, and have a BMS put in that financially wouldn't make any sense. Now, over somewhere like a hospital or something like I, I worked in the sports surgery clan, clinic in Fantry, the facilities manager for about a year and a half, and we wouldn't be lost without the BMS. So, on something that size, where you're able to pinpoint exactly where the problem is hit the buttons, close the valve, do what you need to do there to get the repair and maintenance in place, absolutely. But just on that pilot project, it just financially didn't make sense. There was no way it would have worked out in any way. Sorry, Barry. Uh, morning, Vincent Gibson, Construction Innovation Lab. Um, you mentioned there that the involvement of the FM manager at the design stage can affect the design costs up. Uh, have you done any research on the inf influence of the facility management towards construction costs if he's involved at the construction phase? and pay back on that then? Yeah, well the whole thing about the research is to bring the FM on and the FM is looked upon as an operational role. You know, a lot of people talk about a good game but at the moment they're still looked upon in an operational instead of being brought up to the business. Uh, from some of the research I've looked at, they can affect materials directly because they, be, they will want to focus on long-term elements instead of, uh, I suppose, uh, something that, for example, if I go back to a job I worked on, there was aluminium tin, uh, titanium put up with cladding on the side of the building. This was the worst thing that they ever put up. They're washing it, it's rusting, it's a nightmare. Like, I don't know rust, but there's kind of a, a fungus coming on it. It was, for the sake of architectural enhancement, it was counterproductive to cost. So if the FM was involved in that, he could have come on and said, look, you know, I mean, I know it looks pretty, but over 10, 15 years, this is going to be a nightmare, it's going to cost you a fortune. So having him in there as a consultant role, and even if he can just add a couple of little things, like uh, floors, uh, paint, mm. some specific like that, like I know that's a very basic, basic level, it could have a massive impact throughout the whole life cycle. And just, just one other thing there, you mentioned barriers to basically raising the profile of FM and raising the influence of them. Um, could you maybe just elaborate a bit more on the barriers at that construction phase and the design phase? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, I, I, I think some of the barriers, like if, we, if you take BIM out of it and just look at the construction at the moment, some of the barriers are faced is that, you know, I mean, the architect might fear a bit of the FM impeding on top of them as well, so just that whole issue. Also with the FM coming on, do they have the technical knowledge, like, you know, I mean, what is their basis? You know, I mean, for me, for example, I, I, I'm a civil engineer with the recession, I, I was shunted into the FM section, so I have a bit of knowledge in that, in that thing. And I even say shunted, it wasn't until then did I actually see the value that was in it. So I would, I, I'd be some benefit, but in a lot of aspects, the FM might make a, you know, I mean, might make a valued input. And then, like, you know, there is a stigmata which is there in FM where they do see themselves as just an operation role, where they are confined to the shadows of the Irish AEC FM sector because they just don't know what to do to promote themselves to go forward. Now, it's fantastic with the likes of the IMF, IPMFA there and further bodies, but the FM himself will have to start finding ways to, I suppose, advertise themselves and, and their benefits a bit more if they're going to overcome those barriers. Okay, uh, thanks for that.